Welcome to Chaos Reborn. I know you're eager to enter into battle and prove that you're the most powerful wizard in all of Limbo, but before you do, take a moment to familiarise yourself with the game's interface. First of all, in the top left hand corner you have the gear icon. This will take you to the game's option menu and allow you to change some of the game's settings during the game. More importantly, this is where you will find the surrender button if you realise that you have been bested in battle. Below that you will see the avatar portraits for all of the wizards in the current game. The wizard whose turn it currently is will have a coloured circle around their name that is slowly depleting. This is the turn timer. Once this turn timer reaches zero, the wizard's turn is over and automatically passed on to the next player. If your wizard has any actions or movements remaining, they will be forfeit for that turn. You can also tell the current player by the little white chevron next to their portrait. The turn timer is also replicated over here on the right hand side next to the end turn button. Notice that the colour of the outline around the wizard portrait matches the colour of the circles around the feet of the wizard and all of their summoned creatures. For those of you who have difficulty in distinguishing colours, your wizard player number is also represented in the circle around the wizard's feet. Below that, in the bottom left hand corner of the screen is the chat window. You can use this to converse with your fellow wizards. You can either hit the enter key on the keyboard or you can click directly in the box to type. At the top of the screen in the centre is the turn count. When the turn count reaches the maximum number allotted, if both wizards are still alive, the game is ended and considered a draw. If you are playing with victory points enabled, then when you run out of turns, the wizard with the most victory points is declared the winner. Below that is the cosmic balance bar. At the beginning of a round, this will start at 0%, which is neutral, and as chaotic or lawful spells are successfully cast, this bar will start to move in the appropriate direction. This balance is actually what causes spells to have a higher casting chance. So for example, if the bar is into the law direction, then lawful spells will have a more successful chance of being cast. Below the cosmic balance bar is the battle log. If you press this button here, it will actually give you a list of all of the actions that have been taken, anyone that has moved, any spell that has been cast and any successful kills. On the right hand side of the screen you have this button here which allows you to go into the replay mode for the game. This allows you to go back through various steps of the game and replay all of the actions. If you missed an event and you want to re-watch something that has happened you can use these controls along the bottom of the screen. To get back out of this menu simply press the same button on the right hand side and that will return you to the game's interface. As already discussed, we have the end turn button, which has its own end turn timer. And below that is the button that cycles between all of your available units, which still have movement or action points remaining. You can also accomplish this by pressing the tab key on the keyboard. With a unit selected, the top right hand corner of the screen will get a basic info panel about the currently selected wizard or creature. This will give you some basic information such as your attack strength, your defensive strength and your magical strength. If you then hit the info button below that it will give you an expanded window which will give you many more stats about your currently selected wizard or summoned creature. If you mouse over or click any of the individual stats at the bottom of the screen you will get a little pop-up that gives you a little bit more information about each of those stats and tells you what they do and how they affect you in combat. The same works for creatures, but it also gives you some additional information such as whether or not the creature is an illusion, any special abilities it has, such as in the case of this unicorn, it is mountable and it has an ability called charge. And if I were to click on one of my opponent's units, and select that, it would tell me that it is an unknown illusion because at this point I haven't tried to dispel it, I don't know if it is an illusion or real, so it will come here and tell me that it is unknown. Of course if I cast a disbelieve and it turns out to be real, this will then tell me that it is not an illusion. If it is an illusion, then it will just be disbelieved anyway and I won't have to worry about that anymore. If a player tries to hit the end turn button and they still have any actions remaining on any of their units, 
you will get a warning dialogue telling you that you still have creatures left to move. At this point, you can hit no and then go back and make your final move. Once you've made all the moves that you possibly can, the end turn button will start to pulsate white. Along the bottom of the screen, you will see a series of cards which represent the spells that your wizard currently has in his hand. You can sort these spells using the two buttons on the left hand side. The first button sorts them in the order of the percentage chance of being able to cast, and the button below will switch them and sort them between Law, Neutral and Chaos. Each of these cards has several bits of information on them. The number at the top represents the percentage chance of the spell being able to be cast. Below that you will see either Neutral, Law or Chaos, which represents the alignment that the card belongs to. Chaotic spells will push the Chaos uh, the cosmic balance towards chaos, lawful spells will push the cosmic balance towards law, and neutral spells will have no effect on the cosmic balance. If the cosmic balance is already towards the scale of law, then the law spells will have an increased chance of being able to cast. If the cosmic balance is moved towards the chaos side of things, then your chaotic spells will have more of a chance of being able to cast. The spells also, next to where they say Law or Chaos, will have a number, such as here we have Law 3, here we have Chaos 4, here we have Law 5. This represents the tier of the spell, and generally the higher number means that it is a more valuable and more powerful card. A wizard's spells are split into one of three basic categories. You have summonable creatures, such as the skeleton and the eagle here. You have magical weapons such as the magic sword and the magic bow here, and you also have magical attacks, such as decree, technically disbelief is also a magical attack, and various others within the game. As you mass over any of these cards, it will expand and it will give you a pop-up that tells you a little bit more about what the card is, what it does, if it's a creature, it will give you information on the creature's power and any special abilities that it has. And you can also click on the info, bot uh, info button at the bottom of the card, which will give you the expanded window for that creature and will allow you to read information on the individual statistics for that creature. To the right of your spell hand, you will see your spell deck. This tells you the remaining number of cards that are in the deck and also tells you the amount of value of law and chaos cards that are in there. Now obviously this deck currently only has four cards remaining, but it has a chaos value of nine, and that value goes on these tier numbers that the various different cards have. So of course, if I had two skeletons, then I would have a value of eight, for example. So this is a good way to know how many cards you have remaining. In the bottom right hand corner of the screen, there is this gem shaped icon with a number. This is the number of mana points that your wizard has. You gain mana points from failed spell casts, from killing enemy creatures and enemy wizards, and also from collecting the mana sprites that can be found around the battlefield. Below that icon is a representation of your wizard's staff. If you click on the staff, you will get a pop-up that tells you the type of staff you have, the name of its special mega spell, the type of stats that the staff gives you, and also how many mana points you need to activate your mega spell. Another way of gaining mana points is to burn one of the cards from your hand that you no longer wish to use. You can discard a card and convert it directly into mana points. If we, for example, want to discard one of these skeletons because we have two, we can simply drag it with the mouse, drop it on top of the staff. We will get a new card in our hand. We now have 62 mana points and the staff icon is now starting to flash white. If we click on the staff icon now, we have the ability to activate our mega spell. Pressing that button will put our mega spell into our hand ready for casting. In the center of the screen, we have the most important element, the battlefield. You can scroll around the battlefield by using the W, A, S and D keys. You can also use the cursor keys to do the same. You can also hold down the left mouse button and drag to move the battlefield around. Using the scroll wheel on your mouse will allow you to zoom in and out of the action. You can also use the Z and C keys on the keyboard to do the same. 
and the Q and E keys on the keyboard will allow you to rotate the battlefield around to get a better view of the action from different angles. So there we have it, all of the basic information you need about the Chaos Reborn interface. In the next video I will be covering some basic gameplay, including how to move, how to attack, how to summon, and the basics of combat. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you for wizard training.